Okay, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you all to Somerset Council Planning North Committee. So I'm Councillor Pierce, and I'm chair of the committee, and Councillor Martin here on my right hand side is vice chair. So just before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. Fire drill, we're not expecting a drill today. So if the siren goes, it's for real, and we head for that door and on to King Square as quickly as possible. Um, toilets and um, the toilets in main reception and water is available. Please make use of it. It's a really hot afternoon. So uh, it's there and will be replenished as needed. Um, mobile phones. Uh, Please, this is a reminder for everyone to turn off their mobile phones to silent or to mute and uh, to ask those joining us online to turn off cameras and microphones. And uh, please note that the meeting today is being recorded. Um, also a reminder uh, that there are questionnaires for both councillors and members of the public. Um, this is part of the six month review process um, just to make sure that the uh, the planning process is working smoothly. So please remember to fill them in before you leave. I'd be really grateful for that. Uh, so now it's just left for me to introduce um, those that are here today. So to my left are officers from legal and democratic teams, and to my right are the planning officers who will be presenting the applications before us today. And on the wings of the table are the councillors who will uh, debate and decide the applications. So other members of the council office and members of the public may be attending virtually um, or in the room or not, as the case may be. Um, so just, just to say today is a hybrid meeting in that the committee members are present at Bridgewater House and the meeting is also available online via Teams so that members of the public and other councillors can take part virtually. And only councillors who are present in the room today are able to vote on the applications before us. And any councillors here must have been present for the whole of the application in order to vote at the end. Uh, so the format of the meeting will be as per the agenda published and the copy of the officer reports can be found on the councillors' web pages. Each application will be taken in turn and the running order listed on the speaker's list with the officers outlining the application, followed by public speaking time. So all present will remain muted until I ask, uh, call you to speak, and only members of the public that have registered to speak can. Members will then debate and decide on the application. During the debate, there will be a proposer and seconder for resolution, and members will vote on this proposal. Uh, so uh, the, the options will be to vote for, against or to abstain. Votes will be counted and the result announced. So there we go straight to the um, rest of the agenda and we start with apologies for absence, please. Thank you. We substitute by Councillor Lee Redman. Apologies from Councillor Jill Slocum, who has been substituted by Councillor Lance Dudridge. And apologies from Councillor, Councillor Alistair Henry. Thank you. Uh, we then go to the minutes of the previous meeting on pages 11 to 26 on your agenda. Are they agreed as a correct record of the meeting? And I have a proposal around second. Yes, they are. Councillor Bolt. Yeah, quite happy. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Filmer? Yeah, happy to second. Thank you. Are we all unanimous <laughs> for those that were in the meeting at the time? Um, next, we move to declarations of interest. Um, within our committee uh, papers, they are listed those of us who are on town and parish councils, but I'll now hand over to Ms. Lehman, our legal officer, just to go through um, declarations of interest. Uh, thank you, Chair. So um, before we go through declarations of interest, can I have everybody to raise their hand who's on the IDB? And can you confirm whether you've taken part in any consultation or you, you haven't taken part at all? And the page number, please. So uh, Bob Filmer. Yeah, on the IDB, I'm a member of the, the ACT through Drainage Board. I've not been involved in any planning decisions at that level. Okay. Um, I'm on the Drainage Board. 
current drainage you know have you been involved okay you know both mentions yeah current drainage will be involved in any discussion um Councillor Bruce. Thank you, Parrot Drainage Board for me as well. I haven't been involved in any consultations. And um, Councillor Martin. Um, I'm currently ex brew, but I'm stepping back from that position. So by next time, please. And have you been involved? I have been involved in the discussion. Okay. And then can we go on to the Joe Hattie members, who's a member of the Town Parish Council? Can we? Um, and the page numbers, um, if you've been involved in any, any consultative stage or if you have any involved, can you let me know, please, Bob? Thank you. So I'm a member of Brent North Parish Council, as on the list, uh, but I'm coming to this um, application to Dr. Forrest today with an open mind, and I'm happy to, to do that. Also, I do attend meetings of the uh, Chapel Allison at Allison's Parish Council, which is application 1523 at Urban Sports 2. Uh, but have taken no part in discussions on planning and matter. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, I can. Our application 07230006 and uh, also 15230002, they're in my division, but I've taken no part in any discussions on this. Thank you. Nothing to be clear. Sorry, I thought you'd take your hand up. Um, like, um, shall I go to Councillor Ham first? Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Ham. I am Jewel Hattie, um, <clears throat> but the item we discussed at the Axford uh, Town Council isn't actually on the agenda for discussion today. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Redman. Councillor Redmond, I'm still Bridgewater Town Council. I've not taken any part in any planning application or discussions. Um, Councillor Pierce. Um, thank you. Um, page 35, application for Sunnybank Road. I'm a member for Bridgewater South, but haven't taken part in any discussions. And then can we go to um, APIs, ORIs, and MRIs? Has anybody got any declarations in relation to that? So for the for the gallery, um, where we've um, said that um, members also are on the consultative body with the um, IDB, which is the Internal Drainage Board, um, where they say they've taken no part. That means they haven't taken any part in any discussions on any applications that's come before committee today. So there's, there has been no predetermination. Where they've said that they've keeping an open mind, they have listened to this matter at consultative stage, but they intend to come to the committee with an open mind and listen to all the merits of the argument before casting their vote. So they, they remain predisposed. I think that's it. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, thank you. Councillor Red. Yeah, if you're going to just about to ask for any further declarations to the chair. Uh, oh, apologies. I have a declaration in relation to the item on 42 Sunny Bank Road, which I, uh, as a district councillor, uh, registered an objection and I have an objection still but I'll be speaking against it and my advice is that uh, after I've spoken I will leave the room just in case anyone thinks I might prejudice the decision making of the body but that is the thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So we'll now move on to item four on the revised agenda which includes public question time. We have um, people registered to speak and they'll be taken when the applications are considered. So that brings us to the first application of the afternoon, agenda item five on page 29 of your papers, and that is for 65 Brent Street, Brent Knoll. And this is a returning application. So, um, Ms. Parsons, would you like to take us through, please? Thank you. This, uh, this is a planning up application for the erection of a first floor extension, two-storey extension to the north, east and southwest elevations, uh, together with the formation of new vehicle access. Now, this application was um, considered by members at the last committee when members resolved to defer the application so that um, further consideration could be given to the design and materials of the property in context with its, uh, with its the character of the area. Um, so I will run through um, 
the proposal again and demonstrate how the proposal has changed. So the site is located um, alongside Brent Street and is approximately circled in the red line there. And the existing property comprises of a bungalow, which is part render and part brick. It is one of a row of a variety of different properties in the street scene where um, we've got red brick on one side, two storey property. And that's looking down in the other direction of bungalow, render and brick. That's looking directly into the site with the garage to the rear of the site. And is looking along the street scene on the opposite side of the road. And in terms of its context, you can see it's one of a row of um, some detached, some semi-detached properties. And this is the existing drawing. And this is the this is what was proposed and presented to members last time. And what the agent has done is amend the materials of that front gable feature um, to remove the natural stone so that it would be render. So that shows the amended plan. So that shows the front gable feature to be rendered. And also the garage to the side, um, which is currently brick brick fronted, that would remain as brick fronted and not be a natural stone as previously proposed. And so the recommendation is to grant consent based on these amended drawings. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, we have no speakers this time on this application. So it's open to members. The only thing I would say, last time we had a real good debate about this. And um, I would say we're not in the business of designing a house by committee. So the application is that it is before us. I'm not wishing to prevent any discussion, obviously, but we will not be redesigning. Um, so, Councillor Filmer. Thank you very much. Yeah, as you say, the last meeting we did have a lot of discussion about the thing. To be fair, the, the uh, Africans agent has gone away. He's taken on board the issues that were raised by the by the committee. I know the parish are still a bit grumpy, but ultimately he's done what the committee asked him to do. It does blend it better than it, it was. So I'm I'm happy to go with the recommendation of the standing climate. And it's got a really nice chimney on it as well. So <laughs> thank you, Councillor Bill. Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, on the same view. I think the render blends in better than uh, what was originally uh, Brought forward, and I'm happy to uh, go along with the recommendation if it's been recommended or seconded. Uh, Thank you. Any more debate? Okay, we have a proposer and a seconder for uh, the officer's recommendation to grant permission. Can all those in favour please show? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that takes us on to agenda item six, uh, which is the uh, application for the um, annex for an erection of a semi-detached house at 42 Sunny Bank Road, Bridgewater. We have Councillor Redman, who will be speaking to this. And we have another speaker, Mr Parkhouse, we see the applicant. So I think Councillor Redmond, sorry, we need the application first, don't we? Sorry. <laughs> Ms. Parsons, thank you. Thank you. So this is an application for the erection of a semi-detached house on site of an existing a single story um, garage or an annex at uh, 42 Sunnybank Road in Bridgewater. And the site is located um, amongst the predominantly residential area with the school alongside the eastern boundary there, as you can see. And this is a row of um, houses and this, this proposal seeks to demolish the existing flat roof addition to the side and to erect a dwelling. And this is the existing um, host dwelling, this one here, and alongside there is a flat roof um, garage and extension, which is also linked to the flat roof structure of the adjacent property here. And another view looking at the adjacent property, and you can see the two, two um, flat roof structures are 
are joined together. And another view looking straight on, there's an existing access off the road that leads to parking. And this is a drawing showing the existing layout, indicating the, the house here with a flat roof addition here. And it's proposed to erect a dwelling following the roof line of the existing property and opening up the highway at the front there. So there would be um, space to park or two vehicles at the front of the existing dwelling and proposed to park three vehicles in front of the new dwelling. In terms of the accommodation provided, there would be three bedrooms at first floor level with an open plan kitchen dining room at ground floor and um, sorry, open plan dining um, lounge ground floor with a, a separate kitchen and upstairs we've got three ensuite bedrooms. This drawing shows the existing elevations with the, um, the red outline indicating the existing flat roof addition on the side and this, this is actually the proposed house which would be in place of that flat roof um, extension on the side and as you can see in terms of the design it's uh, following the design of the existing property the roof line would be in line and front and rear elevations would be roughly in line go back to the layout I think so in terms of the principle of residential uh, development at this site it's uh, within a predominant, predominantly residential area and within the settlement boundary whether principal or residential is considered to be acceptable. In terms of impact on um, the design and character of the area, the design of the proposed dwelling would be similar to that of the post dwelling and of that of the neighbouring properties. With regard to the site area, there would be adequate space around the property so as to provide adequate private amenity space. Um, with regards to residential amenity, there would be adequate residential amenity for the proposed dwelling. Impact, taking into consideration the impact on neighbouring properties, there, the neighbouring property number 40 to the south um, has an intervening flat roofed garage between their property and the proposed site. And due to the um, siting of this proposed dwelling being on the north side of the neighbour, and due to the distance on um, the, the relationship between the proposed dwelling and the house at number 40, it's not considered that it would cause undue um, loss of light or visual domination. There are two first floor windows in proposed to be in the new house, and that would be controlled by condition. One of them serves a larder and the other one serves an ensuite. That could be controlled so that that, that that remains obscure place so as not to cause any overlooking at the frontage of the neighbouring property. Um, in terms of the, the neighbour's concern with regard to the um, separation of the flat roofed uh, sections, the, the applicant has, has served notice on the neighbour because what will be happening is they will be removing um, their half of the flat roofed garage extension. Um, they've served notice on the neighbour to notify them of this planning application. Um, we would have notified them in, anyway in terms of um, our statutory responsibility when the application was submitted. And while the neighbour is concerned about how that's going to be left when, when the applicant's structure is removed, that, that is a legal matter that would be dealt with by other means and it will also be subject to a party wall act. And based on the proposal I submitted, the recommendation is to grant. Thank you. And um, we have two speakers on this item. Firstly, I'll call Councillor Redmond to take it. So do you have... Before you start the time, just to say, I've spoken to Mr Williams, the resident of your 40, and he explained the fact that he lived here today, apart from the fact his wife is currently in the hospital. So it was a problem with that, otherwise we'll take it. Thank you. You have three minutes to start when you're ready. 
Thank you, members. My concerns as outlined in the original objection were not conclusive. I've had correspondence with the planning officer following my objection. The planning application submitted and available online is poor, which concerns me. The portion details are wrong or misleading. Section 5 describes demolition of the current house. The house is not being demolished. It's the adjoined outbuildings that are. Section 6 calls the attached building a small house. The connected annex includes a garage and it's linked in a substantial way directly between 40 and 42. The structures are reinforced concrete slabs. Section 9 explains that there is currently one parking space and that this would not be increased. Section 16 indicates a four bedroom house on the plot and has not been updated with any revisions. The attached planning statement is confusing, does not make reference to a party wall or any of the revised plans. Drawings were updated in January 2023 to try to address some of the concerns raised. As it is unclear what has changed, as there is no revised planning application or statement to offer an explanation, I want to outline my further concerns to try and advise why it's important to add a covenant or legal agreement to this application if you choose to approve the poor application. The current ground floor annex loosely referred to in the applications are not as simple as it reads. The construction of these homes included an outbuilding and garage joining 40 to 42. I urge you to take a look at Google Maps to view the property. To be clear, both properties are joined by a substantive concrete structure, physically linking both properties. I have to assume that this would be classed as a party of as indicated by the officer and subject to legal application. But with no agreement or explanation as how the works will be carried out, this is to be seen as being in dispute. The applicant and current owner has made no secret of the fact they entail this, intend to sell the owned property. Mr. Williams, who lives at 42, is Mr. Williams is concerned, who lives at 42, is concerned that, that the approved no party wall agreement being in place. There is a new builder could start work and impact the party wall without any understanding of its potential implications. This is a complicated application. The only sensible way is for a deferral to allow the applicant to generate the correct paperwork. A revised application with a supporting planning statement can be submitted that makes sense of the new plans that have changed from a four bed to a three bed. It may help to clarify a parking statement as well. A covenant or legally binding note can be added that will protect the party wall rights should the property be sold to a new owner without planning. Member, if you are not con members, if you're not content to refuse the this application based on a poor application. I hope that you will be able to seek a deferral of this application to ensure a more informed decision can be made and taken to protect the current owner's rights. Thank you. Right on time. Thanks very much. Um, we have another speaker, uh, Mr. Parkhouse, who will be joining us through team, I understand. Uh, Mr. Parkhouse. Can you, can you hear there. me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. That's great. We can hear you clearly. Um, you have three minutes to speak, um, which the, type, the timer will start when you begin speaking, and I'll let you know when you have a minute left. And okay, thank would you. Go on, please. Okay, um, so the conclusion the planning officer has reached, the proposed dwelling, would have no adverse impact on the character of the area, amenity of the neighbouring residents, ecology or highway safety shows that what has been submitted takes into account all requirements as set out by the council. The original application was made two years ago. It has been updated and this has been all through negotiations and discussions with the council throughout. The existing structure does need to be replaced as in its current form it cannot be occupied and it is an eyesore and it does devalue the neighbouring properties. It has in fact been, we have in fact been told that um, it cannot, it say it can, no one can actually um, be living in there. So the concerns of the ward member and neighbour are taken into consideration and whilst myself will not be undertaking the works to replace the existing annex, attaching conditions to the proposal to ensure that the neighbours and their rights are looked after, whilst already covered in buildings regulations and government laws, can be added if this committee sees it is necessary and if this would have my support. The purpose of the application 
is solely to aid in the sale of the property to a new investor who can see this application through. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parkhouse. Members, we now open it for debate. I'll start because there were some issues that were raised by the speakers, and that would be a good place to start around implications on the party law. There's all, you know, understandable concerns there yeah. um, and demolition issues. Um, would you like to um, so address some of those concerns that were raised? Just in terms of what you can and what you can't consider in terms of what's materials planning. Um, the Party Ward Act is a civil act that um, basically relates to when people have a shared boundary. So in this case, there will be a shared boundary because the garages adjoin each other. So there is a wall that runs between the two of them. That wall is covered by the Party Wall Act, which is a separate civil arrangement that has to be entered into by whoever ends up implementing the development and the neighbouring property, but it sits outside of planning. So we can consider um, the visual impact, the external appearance, the removal of the structure and replacement with whatever the structure is being replaced with, um, but the Party Wall Act falls under separate legislation. So that's that's covered and protected through a different route. So that's not material to the consideration this morning, this afternoon. Thank you. Um, it was it was raised as well about the concrete sort of struts um, going across both of the, the buildings. And I guess that too is covered by uh, by that legislation. How does that, just so that we're all clear, how does that actually kick in in terms of the process of the application and construction? Um, in, in terms of demolition, that will fall under building and control. So building and control will get involved in terms of when they're taking a building down, how they take a building down, but also all the party wall, when you're taking the building down, what the impact of taking it down at that stage and in that way it's going to have on that boundary. So the, the boundary and structure on the boundary is protected through the past wall. The demolition and how that occurs and how the building works are undertaken, the detail of that is controlled by building control. But again, unfortunately, outside of planning. Thank you for that explanation. Is there any debate? Thanks to Phil. Building regs. There are also the party wall act, which is other legislation, and also there were some other matters that are actually going to be individual matters to sort with neighbours anyway. That's not part of our, our process. I mean, looking at the design, it, it is in character with what's there. Um, it looks like um, separation distance that is there with the existing structure that's in the next door neighbours keeps uh, keeps it being away from being a problem in terms of overshadowing or domination. Um, Overlooking, we appear to have the officers and, and the applicant have dealt with, with those by making sure the windows are either obscure or, or, or removed. Uh, and I know there were a number of issues raised about items on the actual application report, but from what we've heard, the process during the process, the application has changed. So that's why it's different from what was on the application report. Because it's in effect, that those negotiations between the council and the applicant have dealt with the problems that were on the original application. So as, as far as I can see, as it stands at the moment, I can't see a problem with this application. I'd be happy to do the recommendation. Thank you. So we've got a proposal for the uh, recommendation. Is there a seconder? Councillor Bolt. No, I be a second. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to pick up the, there seemed to be a bit of confusion about what was actually proposed, but it is very clear in our papers that we're um, considering here. So we have a, a proposer and a seconder to, for the officer's recommendation to grant permission. Um, all those in favour, please show. Seems to be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I just want to uh, retrieve Councillor Redmond. Moment. Yeah. Okay. 
We now move on to agenda item six, which is the application for erection of agricultural storage building and solar panels at Chapel Allerton on page 43 of our agendas. Um, Ms. Chorley, would you like to take us through the application, please? Thank you. So this is an application at uh, Lambert Scotland Lane, uh, so it's just southeast of Chapel Allerton. Uh, the application is for the erection of an agricultural storage building uh, to sort of solar panels uh, to one of the roof planes. Uh, it's a revised scheme that seeks to address uh, previous reasons for refusal. Uh, just on the slide there, you can see the application site is just located. Uh, oh, sort of showing up. Um, it's just located there to the southeast of. Oh, right. uh, see, sorry, apologies. Um, so it's it's just located here along the uh, along the Scotland Lane, um, and slightly closer here it's this parcel of land that we're talking about. And so here you can see the location plan that's been submitted. Uh, so it's this relatively modest parcel of agricultural land, and the proposal is for a stone and gravel base with a single agricultural still portal framed uh, metal shed. Uh, to be erected here. Uh, here we've just got the elevation and floor plan and reef plan of that agricultural building, um, relatively uh, standard in terms of what you would expect for a storage building. So it's to provide secure storage for tools and machines that are used in connection with the agricultural activity. And some site photos now. So this is the existing entrance. So there are these kind of existing entrance gates there. And the site is bounded by kind of mature landscaping. So this image here, just to the right of the screen, is actually taken from uh, the kind of corner of Scotland Lane, looking across, and it's this parcel of land here, that kind of linear parcel there that you can see. Um, and just taken from the entrance gates itself, um, it's this parcel, as it's kind of largely grassland at the moment. You can just see the caravan there, that's currently being used for the storage of tools and machinery. And the applicants have confirmed that in the event that the application is granted permission today, that caravan will no longer be needed and would be removed from the site. Uh, just a couple more photos to give you a bit of uh, context. So this is the access lane um, as you come along um, directly into the site. And then that's just again looking slightly further along that lane. So in terms of the principle of development, uh, the site is formed of agricultural land within the countryside. Uh, they don't need consent for their proposed use, which is agricultural and horticulture. They intend to rewild part of it um, for wild uh, flowers, do some tree planting, um, growing vegetables, uh, fruit trees um, and some herbs. Um, it is a revised scheme, as I mentioned, that seeks to address the previous reasons for refusal, which sought consent for a, a kind of greater proportion of development. So that included a static caravan, um, a larger building and some poly tunnels. Um, the reduction in development is considered that it's now just what is directly necessary for the proposed agricultural use. Um, as I mentioned, it's a steel portal framed agricultural building, relatively modest in terms of its scale, nine metres by five metres and an eaves height of 2.5. Uh, solar panels are advised to be necessary for electricity for the tools and machinery needed in connection with the agricultural use. The applicant's advisor are currently relying on a generator, which they don't wish to continue to use. Um, the agricultural use, as I said, does not in itself require consent, so the development that they're seeking consent for is limited to the erection of the building itself. Um, and the yeah. of the scale of that development now is not considered to give rise to any material increase in traffic, traffic movement or unacceptable impact in terms of local highways network. Uh, highways have confirmed no observations when they've been consulted. In terms of ecological impact, the application site does lie within subset levels of Moors Ramsar. Uh, there isn't any livestock on the holding at the moment, as you can see. Um, the applicants confirm they don't intend to keep livestock on the, on the land or within the building. We can't control what they do with the land itself, but we can control the use of the building as storage only, so not for the housing of livestock. And subject to that condition, uh, we would be happy that there's no direct increase in phosphate loading likely as a result of the application before you. 
Um, Somerset Ecology Services have been consulted and confirmed they have no objection. They do recommend a condition for a biodiversity enhancement plan, and that's included in the recommended conditions. An informative would be used regarding the removal of any vegetation, and as well, just to remind the applicants of the protection afforded to uh, protected species such as badgers, bats, and nesting birds. The Parish Council have requested a condition to prohibit the sighting of a caravan to the conversion of the building in the future to a dwelling. Um, further, further use or different uses of the land would require further consent, so it's not necessary to apply those conditions. Uh, the agent, as I mentioned, um, the applicant has confirmed that the caravan currently on site is being used for storage only and would be removed. So just to summarise, um, the principle of development is considered acceptable. The size, scale and design of the, of the building is not considered to have an unacceptable visual impact or that the development result in any unacceptable highways impact, subject to conditions to secure biodiversity enhancements and prevent the housing of livestock, there wouldn't be any unacceptable ecological impacts. And the revised scheme is considered to now be sufficiently justified. As such, my recommendation is to grant permission subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've got no speakers, no public speaking on this item, so it's open for members to debate. Do you have any of you? That's the film. Oh, sorry. I mean, if, if, if no one else has got any questions, I've got a couple of questions I want to ask you. But one, I think you've addressed anyway, because I know the parish, as you mentioned, was very concerned about phosphates. And from what you've said, that's that's done. So that's fine. Um, in the report, it talks about the agricultural activity that's been proposed on the site. 40% of the site is going to be farming. We then talk about visual impact and say there's sufficient justification for the agricultural use is going to be that. So what is the agricultural use on 60%? So the back, if I could just, I'll do a couple of others while I'm at it. Um, on your biodiversity enhancement plan, it mentions bats. Would other things like other flora and fauna be covered by that? So birds, nests, uh, maybe a nest that are required for those are covered under that plan. And if the applicants have said they're happy to withdraw with remove the caravan, could we not have a condition on there just to say that within a certain period that will be removed once the application is carried? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so with regards to the intended agricultural use, um, so what they have advised is that they wanted to have an a parcel of agricultural land. Um, they wanted to rewild part of it in terms of uh, additional planting wildflowers, um, but also to grow vegetables and fruits for their own use. Um, and that's the nature of the agriculture. So it's agriculture and horticulture, um, but within the definition, um, there's nothing to indicate otherwise. Uh, the shed itself, um, they're advising, is now much smaller than what was proposed in the refuse scheme. And they've said that is the minimal size to provide enough for the storage of the tools and the machinery. So it's really just to um, turning over the land, planting, um, trimming the hedges, those sorts of things that you would expect um, with the nature of, of work they're using. So relatively modest, it's just secure storage that's probably more appropriate than a caravan on the site. Um, in terms of the caravan, I'm hoping I'm not going to miss anything, um, we could apply a condition and ask them to remove it within a certain period of time. Um, that there's, there's no reason why we can't do that. Um, there was another point oh, on oh, biodiversity. Um, so the reason that, that um, I'm speaking to some psychology services, that it's within the back consultations ANC. So that's why the, the um, enhancement plan is directed towards this, uh, towards bats. And they are happy that the, I guess the remains of the rewilding 40 percent um, is, is going to be sufficient to address anything else. Chair, can I just mention something, please? Yes, please um, do. To the caravan, um, what is the caravan's use on the land? Because is it is it agricultural use at the moment? So I, I'm, I'm not sure whether the condition would fulfil the test, because if it remains agricultural use, then it's lawful use on the land. I think the um, applicant has confirmed they're happy to remove it, provided they have planning permission, so they've got somewhere to put the stuff that's currently stored, so it wouldn't be required in the lawful use of the land. Um, and the red outline does cover the extent of the site, so I, I think we could impose the condition to have it removed. 
um, because they'll be using the ancillary storage in connection with building or approving, which is what the justification is for the building. Um, that's, that's my advice is, as I said, if, if, it, if it's if it's um, materials kept in a caravan that is um, in the lawful use of the land as it is, then you wouldn't have any enforcement powers to remove that caravan in any event. But if you're happy with that condition, um, um, that's entirely your call on. Um, just bear in mind that um, conditions can be appealed under this process. Thank you uh, for that clarification. Um, can you just go to Councillor Grimes? Thank you. Thank you for the information that we've um, just received. And if we can have a um, section put in about removing the caravan, I will be happy to move the recommendation. Thank you. We had a proposal. Is there a seconder for that proposal with the added condition? I mean, I, I share concern about the uh, not including the, the removal of the caravan attached to this. I think it's what we're probably all thinking, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the aim of the exercises to grow crops, um, you know, to have, we don't want accommodation by stealth on here. So I, I think that would be a good protection if we're not contravening any. Uh, I think given the justification for the building is to rehouse the equipment that's currently being yeah. housed in the mobile caravan. I'm, I'm satisfied it's linked to the development proposal members are considering, so therefore would be reasonable to condition. And the applicant has confirmed that they were happy to remove it, subject to getting planning permission for it. So I think we've got enough control with the justification that's proposed with the response from the applicant saying they're happy to remove it. And it would remove any uncertainty in terms of any potential future on the side of residential development. But of course, I will not hold my breath and say nothing naughty will ever happen on site, but it, it does give members a degree of control over the current application. OK, thank you for that. So I've got a proposal with that condition. Uh, second, uh, I, I understand from this application, um, I'm quite happy to, to second it and not to uh, what Mr. Feast just said. But my understanding is the building is to replace the caravan. Mm -hmm. And once the building's up and running, then I think we're quite justified in asking. Um, I do take on board what um, Ms. Lena says, but I think it's it's the linked that when one goes up, the other one disappears. Yeah. But yes, I'm happy to second it on that. Okay, thank you. So proposal. Oh, sorry. Sorry, just because we've talked about an additional condition, just to be clear, that the wording of the actual condition will be uh, made with the chair and vice chair following the meetings. Um, as is normal practice, but you know, just to make sure you're not expecting us to draft the condition right now. Um, but thank you. Thank you. So we have a proposal and seconder uh, to grant the for the plan that um, so this recommendation to grant permission with the additional uh, condition regarding the removal of caravan on site. Can all those in favour please show? Thank you very much. So now we move on to the final application of the afternoon on page 49, and that's regarding erection of agricultural building with associated works at Cheddar. Um, there you are. Thank you. <laughs> Delvey, would you like to? Good afternoon. Um, so this. Oh, that? <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, we've got here uh, the erection of an agricultural building with associated works on site of an existing polytunnel um, land to the north, 
um, Land, Land of Silver Street in Shetland Square. So uh, this slide lists the main um, policies. So Cheddar does have a neighbourhood plan, um, but also these are the policies in the Sedgemore local plan that are relevant to this scheme. So the application site lies to the north of the main built up area of Cheddar and outside of the Mendip Hills AOMB um, as outlined in orange. So the land to the north is in the AOMB. The application seeks consent for the replacement of the existing polytunnel with an agricultural building. There is an existing agricultural building that's not shown on the aerial view, um, but it is visible within the photos that are later on in the, the presentation and can be seen on that site plan. So the proposed agricultural building will measure approximately 20 by 9 metres with a maximum ridge height of 4.6 metres and a varying eaves height of 3.85 to the north and 3.2 metres to the south. The building will be constructed from fibre cement roof sheets and Yorkshire boarding over concrete panelled walls. The building is needed to support the expanding sheep farm enterprise as the existing polytunnel is not fit for purpose. The applicants currently farm a total of 40 acres and the size of the holding has recently been expanded. So we move on now to the site photos. So this is a view of the site um, from the south. So you can see there the existing um, agricultural building with sort of the grey um, green sort of tarpaulin on it. Um, and then sort of just the top of the polytunnel where this building's going. And then as you sort of move into the site, this is the view. And then sort of panning round towards the southeast. And then a view from the sort of other side of the field. So there are a number of rights of way in the vicinity of the building, um, as can be seen on this on this plan. So both the purple and the green um, lines are public rights of way. Um, and I've taken photos from some of these rights of way because they bordered the AOMB. Um, so I thought it was important to sort of show the views of the site from from these locations. So the first footpath that we'll be looking at is the one circled in yellow. Um, and as you can see, it's very enclosed with vegetation. Um, you, I tried taking photos of the site um, and it was just a lot of leaves. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we then move on to the, the next um, footpath. So um, I couldn't quite get up onto the footpath to the north because of where the quarry is. Um, so the next photo is from the area circled in yellow. Um, so as you can see, even though the, the the level of the land at this point is fairly flat because of the distance um, of the site it's still quite difficult to see um, so the arrow sort of points out where where the site is um, and then we move on to this sort of area now as you sort of go up Tutters Hill um, so the land level is dramatically higher than the application site um, but there's a number of other buildings that can be seen in the vista um, and also substantial vegetation. So whilst um, this photo you can sort of see out and see the view, there was a lot of vegetation. Um, so it wasn't like the whole of this footpath was as open as this. So in terms of the main considerations, um, the principle of the development um, is considered to be supported as the use of the building relates to a countryside use. In respect of the visual amenity of the proposed building and the potential impact on the proposed protected landscape, the scheme is considered supportable due to the typical agricultural appearance of the structure and the extensive screening from the surrounding right-of-way network. Whilst there are dwellings in the vicinity of the building, the site is considered to be well distanced to not give rise to any unacceptable impact on the amenities of these residents. In terms of ecology, the ecologist has since reviewed the scheme and has recommended conditions to secure an external lighting scheme and bird boxes. So that's, um, sorry, since the publication of the report, which I should have mentioned at the beginning. Um, so the ecologist has provided conditions for um, so an external lighting scheme to be approved prior to um, any external lighting being installed and um, the installation of bird boxes. The ecologist did not advise bat boxes in this instance because of the species of bat that are in the area. Um, apparently, so like bat boxes or bat boxes favour the bat that doesn't like these bats, um, but they recommend a bird 
So um, the, the Parish Council raised a concern related to foul waste disposal. The agents confirmed that the farmyard manure generated from the building is spread on the land as a fertiliser. It is therefore considered that the proposal complies with the relevant policies of the local and neighbourhood plans and the officer recommendations to grant that session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we do have a registered speaker on this item, and that's Mr. Ford, who is the agent for this application. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen but very valid circumstances, he can't be with us today. So he has provided his text, and um, Mr. Taylor will now read that to us, please. Thank you for your time in considering this application for you today, which comes with officer recommending approval. I write as agent to this application on behalf of the applicants, Gemma and Ed Young. I apologise I can't be with you today, but I enable you to be in hospital having a surgery. The reason this application is at committee is due to the Parish Council recommending refusal for two reasons. I have therefore thought it prudent to start by addressing these two reasons first. First, the Parish Council consider the proposal to be overdevelopment of the plot leading to loss of agricultural land. The proposed scheme sees the demolition of a commercially sized polytunnel with a floor area of 195 square metres and the erection of an agricultural building totaling 180 square metres. The proposal therefore leads to a net reduction in built form on the site, so we fail to see how it can be considered overdevelopment. Furthermore, the building is for agricultural use on agricultural land, so there is no loss of agriculture. Two, secondly, the current council objective on the grounds that no foul drainage system has been indicated. As confirmed and agreed with the assigned plan officer, the applicants are sheep farmers, and one of the proposed uses of the building is housing the flock. When housed, the sheep will be on a straw bed which absorbs and holds excretia. Fresh straw is added on top of the existing straw every few days, which remains in situ with the building until after the flock are back, back out to pasture. The building will then be emptied at Hamler which is then spread on land as a free and organic fertilizer. In this instance, the small volume of manure produced will be spread on the applicant's other parcels of land being farmed. This is because the land at the application site is rich in organic matter, so the nutrients the manure holds is best utilized elsewhere. For avoidance of doubt, any doubt, no slurry is produced because the manure is kept within the building until it is spread, so it doesn't mix with rain. In conclusion, there are no issues with managing manure. In conclusion, both of the parish council's reasonings, reasons for bringing this application to committee are more adequately addressed. To give you some context of the application, the applicants are young farmers, who are first generation farmers, having recently entered the industry. As you are no doubt aware, farmers are struggling generally at the moment, with lower prices for their produce and rising costs. The situation is even harder for the applicants, as they do not come from farming families who benefit from their mean land historically. At present, the applicants are farming 40 acres, with the majority of this land being rented under medium to long-term tenancy agreements, so secure 10 years. They are actively searching to buy further land, which is not easy due to the unprecedented high values of land locally. It is not unusual for land to sell at over £10,000 per acre, with some desirable plots reaching as much as £25,000 per acre. The proposed buildings are located on the 1.5 acres of land that they own. Thank you. Um, there are no other speakers uh, registered to speak, so it's open now for members to debate. Anyone like to uh, speak up? And some, oh, oh, you're the first. <laughs> who was, who was, sorry, I missed you. Who was it? Councillor Bradford. Bradford. Yeah, there. Okay, Councillor Bradford, then Councillor Ferguson. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And the microphone's not working, but I probably don't need one. Yeah. Yeah. Agricultural buildings like for like this, like it's no, no issues there at all. And best farming practice has been been practiced on the whole year. 40 acres, young chap. You know, and I I would fully, fully support it. You need a new generation of farmers, chat at me again. Oh. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Um, just to echo what Councillor Bradford said, really, in summary, I support the application. Um, my only concern would be in the future 
is that there's already a narrative between the applicants and the other parish council about the flood drainage system. And perhaps, um, and it might be something that happens naturally, so forgive me, but have to make sure there's a system to check that. So that like there's good safety going into the future. But I hope the applicant knows that it's for it. Really. Items that were raised during the presentation of the report, there were additional conditions to be added on. Um, so, um, definitely condition three should be um, condition for external lighting. Uh, yes. Yeah, so condition three would be for an external lighting scheme. And then, and then one for bird boxes. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. In, on the question of the waste, disposal yeah. mm -hmm. um it's been suggested uh, would a condition be uh be useful here or is it sort of over overstating the, the point i mean I, my, my take is that we have to deal with the application that's in front of us and the information we've got on the scale of farming that's happening there is that they have they're adequately able to deal with it within their own land. I think if we get future applications and the scale of the enterprise is likely to grow, uh, when that happens, there's a time to maybe revisit the issue. But based on the information we have in front of us, the conditions probably wouldn't necessarily be justified. Councillor Martin. So, thank you, Chair. Um, it's a question for Alan, actually. Alan, do farms get checked like Ofsteaded farms on a regular basis? So they can see what what the practice is on the area. Too much friends together. The environment agency visits the farm to find out. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry about that. And they do. They have started visiting farms now. Actually, whether it's on farms that size, because farms that size never never tend to be any issues really. They just get on with their jobs and enjoy what they're doing, and and they're good. Everything, the ecology and everything around and everything else. And you know, without without these sort of people, then it'd be a sad old countryside. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the oh sorry, Councillor Redmond. Just want to perhaps come in now a little bit with uh, with, uh, with Councillor Martin's question. Uh, my understanding is that they're not regularly inspected in the way that uh, you may have involved there at the standard inspection. That's not something that happens. There are issues with that where, where concerns are made about farming methods, then they can be inspected. But that's just about it. As, as far as holding up um, uh, a predetermined agreement, unless someone physically goes to check that, then that's not something that's regularly done. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mount. Yeah, thank you. I know we can't judge something that's going to happen in the future, but if something, if the scale does change, and they don't change buildings. Is that another application, or is that just something that can happen and someone's got to notice? So you're talking about in terms of the scale changing, like in terms of the scale of the number of animals per se, rather than. I mean, they'll, they'll need a certain number of buildings to accommodate an increase in sort of. Um, animal stocking numbers on the site and potentially increased land. So generally, the plan. The, the, the hook we have through the planning system is when the building applications come in. You know, we're not necessarily able to control the numbers, but the numbers are intrinsically linked to, to, to the buildings on, on site because ultimately we need to have sufficient housing, particularly during the winter months. So there's a kind of relationship there that we can sort of pick up if future building applications come in. The size and scale of the enterprise isn't likely to significantly change without a future application for another building, I would suggest. Thank you. Uh, if there is no further debate, I am um, uh, Councillor Bradford. Were you proposing? And um, Councillor Ferguson, were you happy? Yeah, I think that. <laughs> happy to second yeah. with the conditions um, added to those stated on the, the papers before us. And that was the condition for external lighting scheme and a condition for the installation of bird boxes. That's, yes. Sorry, that's so that's been proposed <laughs> and seconded uh, to grant as, as per those conditions. All those in favour, please show. And that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, members. That is the final application for this afternoon and um, that concludes the meeting. Thank you.